I got my Bachelor's of Science in Applied Mathematics. I actually came here to UNM uh, wanting to major in Computer Science. I took the first few courses and I liked them, but then it got boring for me. I, just kinda, I couldn't find the energy or the motivation to want to do the assignments. So I did, but they weren't as great. <laughs> And then um, my minor at the time was math, and so after that I kind of started taking more math classes than I did computer science courses. And it was just one semester I thought maybe I should switch my major to math. Um, I started in computer science and I'm still in computer science so far, <laughs> thankfully. And I hope I still I still continue to do it. So far I like it. It was definitely a it was a tough decision to make. Like in high school, I knew I wanted to go to the engineering field because I liked math and I liked uh, um, more the technical stuff, technology, computers. So I knew I wanted to do something with engineering, and I ended up doing computer science because I liked the coding part, the, the programming. So I decided to do that. It was definitely hard because I had no experience. I learned to push myself. I just kept doing it and worked harder. If you really like what you're studying, then you're going to continue doing it. And of course, you have to do something that you like or else going to be really hard to try to get through it. I originally came from Kansas um, as a high school student, a high school senior in Kansas. I had a hard time really choosing what college I wanted to go to and what I really wanted to major in. All I knew is that I wanted to kind of work with medicine and I liked helping people. So the obvious thing was a doctor, um, obviously to me at that point. So I became a biology major because I actually did like studying life and organisms. My high school had about, I think, a total of 1,000, and I had a graduating class of 160. And I went straight to a community college with like 15,000 people, and it was a really big transition. Some of my friends went out of state or went to the local university, so I didn't really have anyone. So it was, it was a little hard to try to come up with friends or try to do all these different activities. Yes. But so uh, my biggest change and the hardest kind of cultural change and scholastic change or academic change was from the community college in Kansas to the university in New Mexico. Um, I really, there were some other universities in Kansas, but I decided to go to New Mexico to get a different perspective of the country. Um, and I really have. And also there's a lot more diversity. And so being a low income student and an underrepresented student, there were a lot of universities in Kansas that were high tuition rates and that just were predominantly, predominantly white. And so it was hard for me to really decide um, where to go in Kansas. And when I saw the diversity in UNM, um, and it's mainly all diverse, and I saw the low tuition rates, I was trapped. And then the mountains trapped me even more. Um, um, it was hard academically and socially because I didn't know anyone. I came here on a whim by myself. I lived in the dormitories, which was a great idea because I got to really meet other students from other places and even from here um, who I get to live with, who I get to talk with, go to classes with. Um, but it was a hard transition. Well, I had graduated high school and then I got my liberal arts degree from the UNM branch campus in Gallup. So um, for, where I graduated from high school, and the branch campus is about 40 minutes away, so I actually stayed at home for those two years. Um, it didn't feel that much different <laughs> going just going to uh, the branch campus because I still lived with my parents. Um, it was pretty much very similar to high school, so I didn't feel that much of a difference. Um, but afterward, I came here to UNM, and that was when it was kind of a culture shock because it was such a huge campus, and I felt like I guess overwhelmed, like I didn't know where to go. I guess in general I knew to, I don't know if they had one stop at the time, I think they were in like different places at, the, at that time, but I just didn't know where to go. So I would ask people, but then um, like the staff there, but they would kind of direct me to like different places and no one really knew where to send me. So that was kind of difficult. Um, let's see, then I went to the classes and some of the professors, I felt like, I, I felt like they weren't very helpful in a way, like I guess they expected you to learn some of it on your own, but what really helped me later on was, um, I guess, finding study partners to, you know, work, work on homework with, uh, same thing with exams, um, but yeah, I mean, it was more overwhelming here 
than it was back at home, I guess. The transition from high school to college was definitely a different step. Um, I think because I took AP classes, uh, it kind of helped me because I studied like hours. Because in college, when you come to college, they tell you you're going to study more than like maybe, depending on how many classes you take, you're going to study three hours for that class. So like 12 hours a week or more. And I kind of had that experience like with taking AP classes, but for students who don't take AP classes, they don't, they don't study as much. They could finish their homework at school and just go home and rest. But when you come to college, you have to actually, it's going to be school and studies, school study, and that's basically it. So it was definitely hard. I was able to do it, but it was more studying than I expected. So in high school, you, you know your friends, you have friends in your classes, and it's easier to just like have someone there to ask questions or to ask for help. But when you come to college, it's like totally different people from different parts of the state or from different parts of the country. So it's kind of harder because you're, you're like put in a new place and you don't know everybody, so you kind of feel intimidated. So you're gonna have to like push yourself to try to make connections and try to, try to get help from other people that you don't know. Because in high school, you probably know those people from middle school, from elementary stuff like that and with the teacher involvement in high school teachers kind of baby you a little they help you out they try to like they push you like do your homework do your homework here teachers have professors have um, more than 100 students or even more and they really don't have like the energy to try to push every single student so it's up to you to try to push yourself and then try to get help from the teacher because you have to push yourself to do that so that was definitely different to try to train myself to study more and then um, no more like watching TV as much as I wanted to or just um, like right now currently I'm a junior and I have like a computer ethics class and I'm like the only girl there and we started off with like three girls and all of a sudden like it was like just yesterday I was like oh, I'm just the only girl here like it's pretty weird but like you get used to it but I think um, girls need to be more confident and just put themselves out there because they're smart enough they're strong enough they're the same as men and and then sometimes I think um, the boys in the classes are kind of intimidated so it feels like like they don't want to talk to you but I think it's just intimidation so you have to just push yourself to talk to the other guys and just make connections they're the same people I had already taken a lot of the core requirements at the UNM branch so when I got here the classes were more smaller but I think it was just that I didn't really know anyone here that was a little bit intimidating. I didn't really know how to approach people and who to talk to. <laughs> I came to this university thinking I was the know-it-all. Thinking, oh, I'm gonna rock this university, I'm gonna get this 4.0 GPA, I'm gonna do amazing, or even a 3.8 GPA, I'm still gonna, still gonna do great. And once I got here, I was blown away by academics and the research that they do here, and all these professors have these profound knowledge, and it was, <sighs> classes were hard. Things were very hard to, um, do so I my first semester here I really had a hard time with my grades and my classes because I thought I could study on my own and I thought well I could just go to class come back maybe hang out with some friends but studying that's my own thing but I had average or subpar grades at the end of the semester after talking with my biology advisor um, I was advised that I need to come up with study groups. I need to be able to go to the advisor a little bit more for help um, with different professors to go to um, because each professor has a different teaching style and I need to learn those different teaching styles that each professor has. Um, I thought my note card style, remember this term and I'm done, with um, style of process of thinking would make it through, but it really hasn't. It hasn't one class, but I've learned so many different learning techniques while I've been here? Uh, pretty much that as a student, we don't know anything. <laughs> and a majority of the students don't know any more than I do, so pretty much either talk to other students who might know or just find someone who might just go out there and ask questions pretty much. Definitely, it's up to you. Because in the beginning, it was really hard for me because I really didn't want to ask for help. I didn't want to be like, I didn't want to bother people. I didn't want to like, like, I should know this. But no, like, not everybody knows every single thing. So I think I had to learn to, like, just push myself to talk to people, to try to go to tutoring, to try to go to the professor. That, well, I was definitely struggling in my classes, and I really, like, I had to make a change. So, like, 
either I like struggle my class and just drop my class or just go and ask for help and 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 I, oh, that's what I did I just went for help and they made it way easier it was just like little little things that you might not get by yourself someone else can help you and figure it out right away pretty much just winging it <laughs> and then like write down a full schedule just kind of like okay after this class for two hours I'm gonna work on this after that I'm gonna take a break and then after that, maybe another two-hour session of studying for a different class or something, or working on homework. It was just something like that. I didn't really have a set schedule. I didn't like write my plan. I still struggle with time management now. <laughs> I haven't really learned much there, but um, a lot of it is not procrastinating, which I still have a hard time with. But um, yeah, pretty much just try to squeeze in as much study time as you can as well as free time because studying too much can fry your brain. I've done that a few times. <laughs> so just, yeah, find, I think the difficult thing is trying to find a balance between studying and time for yourself because there's a, there's a huge difference between overstudying and having no time for yourself versus watching TV for eight hours straight <laughs> while you have an exam coming up. That's very difficult. But after like the second semester, I got a job. And I also start starting doing other organizations because you also have to be involved and have like be social socialize and network with other people. That's when you also have to take into account that that's going to take a lot of your time from studying. So you have to schedule that, make a schedule. You have to even schedule like when you eat, when you go like take breaks, anything. You have to schedule that so that way when you everything doesn't gather up and you don't go crazy. So I actually that. decided to just take a deep breath decide on what was my most important classes and really just have a plan for before my class I study at least 30 minutes on what the material we're about to go over is and then after my class I study 30 minutes on rewriting my notes and making sure that my notes are in place where I can remember it not just when I'm in class I write down my notes and I never look at it again um, so different tips like that um, not staying up too late because I was pretty bad about that. I would sleep from 1 to 6 a.m. I, I don't know. I, I had no need for sleep apparently, but I really reflected in my grades, and that's probably the biggest indicator of uh, GPA rise or failure. So I would really suggest getting some sleep, and I'd really suggest having some really good time management skills. And for me, I didn't know how to do it, but others did. My my advisors here, my McNair research advisor did, um, and they really gave me some good input input on how to better take use of my time. For me, it was a lot of phone calls home, and then maybe visiting, going back home once a month, because money-wise and time-wise, it was difficult to go back as often as I wanted to. But my family understood, you know, I mean, my dad, he went to college for years. Like, he would kind of go for a year and then take a lot of time off and then go back and transfer to another university style. And, you know, he just kind of, like, went back and forth. So um, he understood how difficult it was to, you know, work on your bachelor's. So he understood, you know, he was like, stay out there, do what you need to do, and then when you have free time, come out. That's what I did. And um, money-wise, he would send me gas money, <laughs> so that helped a lot. <laughs> my mom's a little crazy. She, uh, my family's a little crazy altogether. They really love me when I'm there, but and but they kind of get sick of me. But then once I leave, I get a phone call every hour. How are you doing? What's going on, uh, Matthew? Uh, I don't know what this is. Can you tell me what it is? Because since you're in college, you know all this profound knowledge, and. It's, it's really crazy, but I think the best thing for me to, that I learned was always contacting your family, even if they call every hour, tell them to call the bless. But every day for me is one of the biggest things. I just have to check up on my mother, check up on my father, check up on my family, see how my little nephew's doing, because I don't want to be disconnected from the world and just have it think, okay, bi biology and chemistry, and that's all I'm focused on for four years here um, because I won't make it through and especially being out of state I see other students go and see their families all the time I see other students throughout breaks 
getting to travel and go see their family, even though I have to work in order to make the funds actually pay bills. So I, I live with like my like with my dad, with my sisters, and I still like don't see them often because I'm at school constantly. Like, just spend my time over here studying or doing like coming to meetings. So it does take a toll. I think you do need some like a break from school and just focus on why you're doing, why you're coming to school and why you're getting an education. Don't get too caught up with like having fun. It it can kind of like slow you down in the future. Like if you really want to get serious in the future about a major, because it can slow you down like maybe two semesters if you just um, like ignore um, doing your homework on time, things like that. Um, try to meet new people in class and get help from them. Make form study groups. Let's see what else. Um, um, join organizations that are like involved with your major. Come in serious, know that college is a serious thing, and but your first semester is not going to make or break you in whatever you want to do in life. Just go to different activities and go see different things. You will make new friends by just being in new environments and make your little uh, support system because you need a support system while you are in college or else you're going to fail. Um, study hard, even if it's a class that seems very easy. You never know what information from that class can really help transcend you all the way to your senior year or even if you become a professional or a graduate student. Um, and never forget your family. Um, even if maybe your family wasn't the most kind or they weren't the most understanding upon you going to college, they were there for you and they were always there for you. And they will always be there for you even though they may not understand. So just give them a call um, or just go see them. Your mom and dad might yell at you like you're spending thousands of dollars or if you have lottery scholarship you're not spending any money. But just make sure that you are always contacting them and you have that support system where you don't go crazy in college. Uh, study as hard as you can but not too much because you'll burn yourself out. Um, take as much time for yourself as you can you know, as far as like maybe exercising, eating, it's, it won't be possible to eat maybe three meals a day, <laughs> but at least try, <laughs> pack a lot of snacks because you'll get hungry, <laughs> um, nap as much as you can because there are times where you have to stay up and write a 10 page paper and you, know, you have to do your research and everything and sometimes you'll have to stay up till like three in the morning maybe, so take enough naps as you can. Um, don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, again, not a lot of other students know what they're doing as well, so maybe, maybe if you just keep asking questions, you might figure it out. And just experience as much as you can. <laughs> Find opportunities to hang out and get to know other students.